there. Oh. There we go. Next up, we have Eric Waltari presenting Airscape. Hi, everybody. So yes, this is an interactive tool for exploring B-cell receptor repertoires and antibody responses. So I'm a member of the Chan Zuckerberg Biohub's data science team. Um, we work on a number of infectious uh, diseases uh, projects, mostly designing novel approaches for large scale experimental design, analysis, and visualization. This is a few examples of some of the projects I'll be talking about in Airscape, uh, where we analyze antibody repertoires. <clears throat> So some of this very obvious to this audience, <laughs> the number of antibody repertoires is rapidly increasing. These are hard to visualize, especially at a very high level. Uh, 40,000 foot view, you know, what's going on. Uh, here's a couple of examples of static high level repertoire visualizations in the literature. Um, our team and collaborators, uh, this is of course during the COVID pandemic, uh, really needed a tool to look at high level um, you know, repertoires comparing many, many uh, sequences and more importantly, interactively, if at all possible. So that's where Airscape comes in. So what we're doing is we're visualizing entire repertoires or panels of multiple repertoires. The way it's doing this is by looking at heat maps. So, so taking the entire repertoire, um, binning it into germline V plus J assignment and CDR3 length. I'll show you what that looks like. Um, and then the very cool thing is that once you start to do those bins, you can on the fly um, make very quickly topologies. I don't want to say phylogenies because you can have convergence um, of CDR3 motif, uh, the sequence motifs themselves. Um, thank you, <laughs> ARC, for making standards because that makes my life much easier to do this sort of thing. So we can take these very, you know, otherwise very different you know, columns and very quickly extract the columns we need for shiny uh, visualization. This is an example of the workflow. Uh, don't really have time to go into it, but I have a poster, I'll say. So the um, long story short, this is up, up on GitHub. Um, we also have a bioarchive preprint out that's looking at a few use cases of COVID uh, data sets as well as HIV and uh, dengue. I'm gonna run through a very quick demo uh, looking for a convergence with CC 12.1, which I think Dennis Burton mentioned last night, actually. Um, and we have a poster, uh, number 110. So, I think, yep, it's going. So when you download it, this is, sorry for resolutions, not the best, but um, when you first go to GitHub, you can see all of the, um, little explanation of what you what you can get. You first have to download our studio. That's the one dependency. Um, when you open up a shiny, I don't know if you have any experience with shiny apps, but you can run it in our studio, kind of within our studio. Um, you can it will open up a a little window, but it's actually better to run it on a web browser. Like when you, you can externally, it's one of the options right there when you click run app. So all those tabs are the are available in the, in the GitHub repo. Some of them include the pre-processing scripts, um, which let you change any, import any uh, ARC data set, which is very cool. Um, so that's, uh, this is actually, I just clicked the run app and it's actually loading the, the Shiny uh, tool and actually all the, all the data sets. In this case, there's about eight, um, examples here, a bunch of SARS-CoV-2. So that's the, on the left-hand side, choosing which data sets you wanna look at. There's some dengue ones in there. There's some HIV ones in there. Many of them, if you're comparing multiple repertoires, there's an option of looking at each repertoire individually in uh, all these facets or combined. The next uh, place to, to look at is you can change the the color scheme to be, so each bin, what's its average hypermutation, what's its maximum hypermutation, you can see the colors changing there, or percent of total to see what's the more common V and J genes. So just to show you what's going on, again, it's pretty small, but across the X-axis are all the V, unique V plus J 
germline combinations V family, <laughs> otherwise there'd be too many, right? Um, and then on the y-axis, CDR3 length. And I think I'm going to, oh yeah, so for this, uh, this is a SARS-CoV-2 example. So the top one is the uh, COVE ABDAB database, which is really great, made by the Oxford Protein Informatics Group. There are four different uh, patient bulk repertoires from four different studies that we just grabbed as examples. And the bottom one was a healthy repertoire. So you can compare all of those at a very high level, or you can combine them into one view. And this is really great for looking for convergence. So now here's some of the interactivity. So I'm hovering over each bin and you can see there's a little pop-up window that gives you some of the information. You can also make a little square and get a list of all the antibodies in a table below. You can also click, you know, you get a hover, but you can also click through, you get a list of all the antibodies and all of those columns. I wanna point out the CDR3 sequences are also in there. For this, I wanna actually just do a search for CC12. Point one. So I just made a square over everything. I'm going to search in this little box, CC 12.1. And then there's actually, it's hard to see, but CC 12.13, 14, 15 are the other ones in there, but there's 12.1. The whole point of doing this is if I don't know anything about it, I don't remember it, it's, it's HV3, J6 with a CDR3 length of 11. So now I can go into the large you know, heat map and hover over 3611, click through. Now we have all of those. In this particular case, there's about 250 individual sequences with that in that bin. Now here's the, what I think is the cool part. So let's just take, I just randomly picked five. Now they all have the same CDR3 amino acid sequence uh, length, right? So this is on the fly creating a little topology, not really an alignment because they might not be related to see how these you know, amino acids compare, these amino acid sequences compare to each other. And then the coolest part I think is you can pick a single antibody sequence you're interested in, CC 12.1 for example. And in the drop down menu, you have a few different, we all have fights over what's a percent cutoff for what's a clonal family, you can do 80, 90, 150 in there. And they'll grab, it'll search through that 250, in this case, sequence set and display all of the sequences within, in this case, 80% um, amino acid similarity. They're color coded in this case um, by data set. So all the purple are all the COVAB dabs. So again, many different um, there's convergence because of many different studies in that data set, but then there's also an orange there that's one of the bulk patient repertoires. Um, I think that's the end of it. There's also a few things like you can, again, the bigger the, the monitor, the better. <laughs> so to be able to like visualize all these, but there's a little toggle to make the, the size, the width or the, and the height of the, the phylogeny bigger or smaller. I think that's pretty much all I have time for. So thank you again. And uh, yeah, my poster is 110 uh, over there tonight. Thank you. Questions for Eric? Hey Eric, um, great talk. Uh, I appreciate the distinction between phylogenies and topologies, which is great. Uh, could you talk a little bit about how the topologies are built and how to interpret them? It's very like, because it's the whole point is that on the fly, like, let's just do this in real time. So in your list of sequences, I actually don't, for, for size purposes, I didn't mention, but like, these can pretty quickly go through, you know, let's say you have, you know, half dozen repertoires of each, you know, up to 500,000 million sequences. I'll thin them by actually grabbing just the CDR3 sequence, amino acid sequence to make things smaller for visualizing for, for real time kind of running of this shiny app. And so, but when you have that CDR3 motif and you're grabbing a single bin, um, you have essentially an alignment, right? Because we have, let's say those are all 11 amino acids long and it's just very quickly running an algorithm to just cluster based on I'm trying to remember my, I honestly don't remember my amino acid models, but it's taking like a very basic amino acid model, 
making either a neighbor joining tree, parsimony tree. Um, there's a couple of options there in that drop down menu. Um, so again, it's just the, I mean, the CDR3 amino acid similarities um, there. So, so yeah, that's the caveat. But it, the great thing is it's real time. And, and like that example, that was all like a live demo I just recorded. Um, and 250 was really fast. You can do up to, and it'll obviously, there's a limit of how many you can visualize. I think I'd make, make it up about 500. It's too busy. But I've done like, if a bin has like 2000 sequences individually in that analysis, it'll still run in like one or two minutes um, and find all of those nearest sequences for you. So, yeah. Any other questions? Great, thanks very much, Eric.